I'll call you Sadie Bo. At first glance, this might seem like just a comic scene, but I think it's actually a scene that reveals an important significance tied to the D family. Where does the D family originate from? And what's their goal? In this video, I'd like to discuss that, including the elements we already know about. I also need to mention this. I've always thought it was an interesting detail, but I had forgotten to talk about it. It was revealed that Lily is the Queen of Alabasta with the name Nefertari, but there's something about this revelation that doesn't sit right with me. Take a look at this image. Do you notice anything strange? Please comment if you notice anything. I still don't know the answer to this question, but I would like to share it in this video. What scene struck you in Chapter 1085? In this video, I'd like to share my thoughts on Chapter 1085 and discuss how the story might evolve in the future, reading from the original version. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Dawn Dusk. Through this channel, I'd like to share theories and analyses about One Piece, including plot developments and the author's thought process, presented in the original language. So if you're not already subscribed, you're always welcome. Let's become Nakama Beyond Borders. As I had speculated, it turned out that Emu is not Lily. Emu confirmed that the D were enemies of the world government. In fact, Dr. Clover theorized that 800 years ago, there were enemies from 20 countries. Additionally, according to Emu, the name D has appeared in various places in recent years. The term kinnen is used, which could translate as recently. There is no precise definition of the time period this term covers, but it is usually used to indicate a span of time ranging from the last five to 10 years. So perhaps what Emu is trying to say is that the name D has begun to stand out after the great age of piracy, following Roger's execution. This implies that Roger would have intentionally kickstarted the era of pirates to spread the name D. I believe that the main catalyst for him was discovering something on Laugh Tale, especially about the D. Perhaps spreading the name D in the world is one of his goals, and it is the pirates who are tasked with carrying this task forward. To become a pirate, one must gain power. In addition, many pirates in the world of One Piece eat devil fruits. The power of the devil fruit is fundamental to living as a pirate. Blackbeard actually stated, It is the power of the devil fruit that allows us to take more advantage of the weaknesses. Roger's goal might have been to increase the number of powerful pirates and change the world. Additionally, if a pirate carries the name D, their D name can be spread in the world. In fact, it is thought that Luffy became stronger in just two years because there were other powerful pirates. He grew rapidly during his battles against other pirates. Roger might have anticipated that the pirates carrying the D name would become stronger in the Great Pirate Era, created by him, and would acquire the power to challenge the world government. Many pirates aim for the One Piece, but they have to collect the road poneglyphs to reach Laugh Tale. Emu said that due to Lily's mistake, the poneglyphs were scattered all around the world. He also hinted at the possibility that Lily did this intentionally. In other words, it's likely that Lily knew where Laugh Tale was and what One Piece truly is. And since Roger revealed that Joy Boy was the one who left the One Piece treasure at Laugh Tale, it's plausible to assume that Lily and Joy Boy had a deep connection. But what was their goal? I will explain it later. In Chapter 1085, we see a brief flashback of Sabo as a child. Sabo recalls telling Luffy and Ace that it was strange they both had the D in their names. Ace responds, I can give it to you too, Sabo. I'll call you Sadie Bo. I believe this flashback implies the essence of the D. The D might be a name that can be easily given to others, as in the case of Sadie Bo. In other words, the D family could just be a name and not an actual blood relation. Even though Ace, Sabo, and Luffy aren't related, they became brothers. Similarly, the enemies of the world government, those who sided with the ancient kingdom, might have carved the D in their names to signify that they are brothers, 
even if not bound by blood. The Kazuki clan and the Mink tribe also consider each other brothers, but they don't seem to be actually related by blood. Their bond might be similar to that of the D. Whitebeard, heard the true story of the D from Roger. During the war at the summit, just before dying, Whitebeard said, those who carry the will of Roger, and those who now have inherited the will of Ace. Even if the bloodline has died out, their flame has not gone out. This is how, from antiquity, the will has been continually handed down. In simpler terms, there's a big chance that Lily declared herself a D as a friend of the ancient kingdom. This hypothesis makes a lot of sense to me personally because Bibi experienced a similar situation. She shared the cross mark with the Straw Hat crew as a sign of brotherhood. I have so far thought that the name D did not exist more than 900 years ago, and it's more likely that it's a system the ancient kingdom created as a symbol of friendship. This is because the story of One Piece emphasizes love and friendship rather than blood ties. However, it is also possible that Lily just inherited the D name from her parents along with her surname, Nefertari. Moreover, since Sora's official name is Vinsmoke Sora, the surname can be inherited from the spouse. The first thing that came to mind was the possibility that Lily married Joy Boy and inherited the D name. In this video, I mentioned a love story between Joy Boy, Lily, and Emu, but there is still too little information to support this theory, and I'm still skeptical, so I will return to this topic as the chapters progress. I don't know if her parents will appear in the story, but one thing we know is, Cobra is the 12th king of Alabasta. This fact unsettles me. Even if Lily was the first queen, Alabasta has had only 12 kings in 800 years. It is possible that they all lived a long life and had children late in life, so it can't be entirely ruled out, but it seems that there are some hidden circumstances. Among the kings from Lily to Cobra, there might have been an immortal king, or a king forgotten by all like Cyrus. And in her letter, Lily also ordered future kings to protect the Poneglyphs. This is what I discussed in this video. Furthermore, there's another thing Lily mentions in the letter. Here's the translation of the original phrase, raise a flag of the dawn in a dying world. This flag could be the one with the sun-like symbol seen on the Alabasta ship. This symbol can also be seen on the crest of the Kazuki family. It is certain there was a connection between Alabasta and Wano because there was a poneglyph mark in Alabasta indicating the presence of the underground Pluton in Wano. This symbol can also be seen on the lands of the Shandia, who were part of Jaya up to 400 years ago. The Shandians worshipped the sun god. Its origin is likely Nika. This means that the legend of Nika might have been passed down to Alabasta and Wano. Thus, Nika might have something to do with the dawn mentioned in Lily's letter. According to the Five Elders, the awakening of the Hitohito model Nika fruit doesn't occur for hundreds of years. In other words, it is highly probable that the person who awakened Nika before Luffy was Joy Boy. At least, it was someone among the enemies of the 20 countries. The dawn mentioned by Lily should have been caused by Joy Boy's Nika power. Wapol was able to see everything happening in the empty throne room through a hole in the wall. Personally, I think he shares similar luck to Buggy. But I wonder where Bibi and Wapol ended up after this incident. Indeed, Morgans was contacted by Wapol regarding leaked information a week after the conclusion of the Levely World Congress. On the other hand, the day when Cobra was killed was the same day the Revolutionary Army battled against Aramaki and Isho, so it must have happened on the fourth day of Levely. Therefore, at least Wapol and Vivi were on the run together for 10 days. Yes, they were together for 10 days. Let's try to figure out how they managed to escape from Mariajwa. There are many possibilities. Luckily, the Revolutionary Army reclaimed Kuma on the same day that Sai and Leo attempted to kill Charlos, so it's possible they escaped with their help. 
The first possibility is that Sabo hid Bibi and Wapol. Sabo had a message from Cobra for Vivi, so it is highly likely that Sabo helped Vivi and Wapol to escape. The second possibility is that they escaped from Mariajwa with Leo and Sai. It was revealed that the culprit of the attempted murder of Charlos escaped from Mariajwa with Myosgard's help, and it is highly probable that Vivi and Wapol escaped along with them. And the third possibility is that they escaped with Bonnie. She can manipulate her age for a period of time, so escaping Marijoa with her ability should be easy. However, this possibility might be low because they are not well acquainted in the story. Anyway, Wapol contacted Morgans a week after the end of Levely, so I'm curious about what Wapol was doing with Vivi during that period. Additionally, there is a doubt when arranging the timelines in Levely. In Chapter 956, Garp says, after the conclusion of Levely, an incident occurred shortly after our departure, and I received a report about Alabasta. Cobra was indeed killed on the fourth day of Levely, and Levely lasts a week. Simply thinking, Cobra was killed on the fourth day, but Sabo was made the culprit of the incident, and it was actually announced after the conclusion of Levely. But there is also the possibility that the incident involving Alabasta was something different from the murder of Cobra. I wonder why Chaka and Pell weren't with Bibi. Maybe they were in another place. Also, in Chapter 1083, we can't see their faces. Regarding Pell, despite saying he was supposed to be with Vivi, he wasn't with her when she was captured by CP0. Sure, Cobra was accompanying him for the meeting with the Five Elders, but it seems like the author had something in mind. Maybe another incident involving Pell and Chaka occurred. Anyway, it seems like the Levely flashback will end in the next chapter. I'm eager to see Dragon's reaction. Do you think he knew about Emu's existence? I have a theory about this. If you're interested, let me know by giving a thumbs up. I would like to post a video on the theory before the next spoilers spread. What I perceived in this chapter is the strength of the world government. I think this will be an important plot element in the future. They may still be incompetent, but both Emu and the Five Elders seem strong enough to cause harm to Sabo. In addition to this, the God's Knights and the power of Emu Sama shot, which is not yet fully revealed. The attitude of the Blackbeard pirates towards the world government is also a significant factor. Will Blackbeard be the final boss? Or will he be used as an example to demonstrate the strength of the world government? I would be curious to hear your opinions.